Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of design tokens. Um, design tokens is a very, very complicated concept and a topic. And uh, in this video, I'm going to be covering everything that you should know as a beginner uh, so that you get the fundamentals and the foundations of them right. So that once you have a good understanding, you can then go ahead and learn more about it. And it's easier to learn more about it uh, once you have a good knowledge of the fundamentals. Now, what is design tokens? Why do we use it? I'm going to get into all of that later. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now is give you an example of what it means uh, by translating it to a real world scenario. Now, all of us have been to school um, and in our school life, it's very common that every person ends up getting some sort of a nickname. So let's take an example of this guy over here. Um, let's say his name is Martin Jackson for the sake of this example, right? Now, Martin Jackson is a guy, uh, he studies in school and uh, that's actually his name that was given to him by his parents. Now, Martin Jackson is also called MJ by his friends. Uh, so if anybody says the two letters MJ, everybody knows that MJ is Martin Jackson. Now, Martin Jackson is also not just a person or a student in that school. He's also the captain of the football team and he's also the FEST coordinator. Now, if we assume that there is nobody else in school with the nickname MJ, let's just assume that's the case. If anybody asks, if the principal of the school asks who the football team captain is, they're going to say MJ. If somebody asks, hey, who is MJ? They're going to say he's the FEST coordinator. All right. Or if somebody asks, who is the FEST coordinator? They might say Martin Jackson. So what's happening here is this, this one person has a nickname, but does two different things. Now, what you see here, which is MJ, which is football team captain and FEST coordinator, these three terms are typically what you call as design tokens. And obviously, it's very hard to create a very straightforward, concrete, uh, symmetrical example between the real world and product design. But this is pretty much of a good example. Now, let's try to understand this in more detail. All right. So now I have this green color with me over here. And now this green color has a hex value of 64D57B. This is the original name. This is the root of that. So if anybody asks, what is 64D57B? That is this particular color with these particular values, um, hex values, right? Now, when you're designing components, you want to give them some sort of a nickname so that it's easy for everybody on the team, including developers and product managers to understand what sort of a color you're talking about. Now let's just assume that this color, we can give this a name and we can call this green 700. All right. Now, what is this 700? Where is this coming from? This is basically a tonal value or a tonal number. Now, if you don't know what this is, I highly recommend checking out my previous video, which is about creating a entire color palette with tonal values and accessibility values. Uh, link will be in the description or somewhere in the card. So definitely do check that out. Now, as you can see, this was the original name. MJ was the nickname and this green 700 is the nickname for this particular color. Okay. Now let's assume that this color is being used for buttons, right? So which means that I'm going to say this is used for button background. Okay, so this is used as a button background. Now, sometimes this color can also be used as text links. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call this text links. So what's happening here is that if in a conversation, somebody says, hey, what color should this text link be? You are automatically going to say green 700. You're not going to say 64D57B. You're going to say green 700. Or if somebody asks, what is the background color of the primary CTA? You're going to say green 700. So this is pretty much how design system tokens work or actually design tokens, not design system tokens. Now, why is this important to do? What is the benefit of doing this? So let's take an example over here. Now we have this one color, which is some sort of a tag. This is not a text link, right? It's more or, you know, what? let me just update this. Uh, I'm just going to call this um, label or I'm going to call this primary label. Okay, or, or I'm saying primary tagline, whatever it is, doesn't really matter. All right. This is the same color. And it has, and we call it, it's used for primary tagline. But this color also is going to be used for the 
button background color, as you can see over here. So the same color, green 700, is being used for two different purposes. Now, if we never use design tokens and we just used, let's say, green 700, or if we just use this, and in the future, we decided to change the primary color for some reason to something else, all right? And, you know, let's say you change it to some sort of like a blue color. The problem is when developers are changing the color value in code, they pretty much have to go to every single element and change the, only the button by removing green 700 and sort of replacing that with, I don't know, let's say a different color. So I'm going to probably call this, um, you know, blue 300, right? Now changing this and ensuring that this does not change is going to be a really, really big problem. And the reason is because there might be 100 CTAs all across your entire product and finding each and one of those CTAs becomes a really, really, really big problem. So let me explain this once again in a simpler format. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to draw a line over here. Oops, sorry. It's going to draw a line. Um, and I'm going to make this white. All right, whoops. And then I'm gonna type in green 700. Okay, um, I'm gonna do the same thing to this as well. Whoops, let's just get the whole thing. Okay, uh, maybe we can increase the size of this, or oh, doesn't matter. Okay, now both of these are green 700. Which means that if I, if the developer goes and changes the color of this button, all right, and, and they end up changing green 700 to blue 300, this color also is going to get changed because green 700 and green 700 are pretty much the same color. But instead, if they didn't do green 700, okay, I'm just going to reduce the opacity of this. All right, but instead they said button background, right? Let's say they said button background. And here they said, oh, sorry, this is going to be primary, primary tagline. And this is going to be primary button BG. All right, and I'm just going to change this as well. So I'm going to make this primary button BG, all right? So now what the developer has to come is all he has to come is find this design token that says primary button BG and change that to be the hex value or link that to blue 300. So this is gonna be primary button BG and this will no longer exist, right? Same thing over here. MJ is still going to be MJ. He's still going to be Martin Jackson, but maybe he gets uh, removed as the football team coach because maybe he has an injury, all right? And somebody else comes to sort of replace him. And that person is going to be a totally different person, but he's still going to, he is still going to be the football team captain, but it's going to be a different person altogether. So this is pretty much how design tokens work. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's look over here. So here we have a white color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this, okay? And I'm gonna come over here and uh, obviously let's give this a different color. Um, I'm gonna make this some sort of uh, an orange color. Okay, and let's say I make this, uh, you know, um, neutral or just gonna say N50, all right, for white, okay? N50, or I'm just gonna say N0, right? Just the way we uh, we called it green 700, um, I'm just gonna call it neutral zero, zero. Now, this color is also neutral zero, okay? Um, I'm gonna bring all this down over here. Uh, this color is also going to be neutral zero. So both of these are pretty much the same color. Now, the only reason we're able to see this more evidently is because there is a drop shadow. Now what happens is if this becomes a dark mode color, so let's say we have this, which is also neutral zero, and there's a shadow. Both of these are the same color. As you can see, this is FFF, and then this also is also FFF. Now if we change this to black, right, this is the problem that we get. 
Now you might say, let's remove the shadow because we don't need a shadow because there's no point of having shadows on a purely black color. So even if I go and change the drop shadow value to zero or make it completely black because there's no other color, we can't add any sort of a shadow like this. That's not realistic and it doesn't look good as well. So if I set this all to black, we pretty much can't see any difference because what we did was when we converted this to dark mode, this becomes neutral zero. So if I make this black, this also becomes black, right? Doesn't make sense. But ideally what happens in dark mode is that you go ahead and you, you make a lighter version of it, right? This is how dark mode works. But this doesn't make sense, right? Because over here, the same color is being given two different treatments. How is that possible? If this color was neutral zero, this color was neutral zero, this also should be neutral zero, and this also should be neutral zero, but ideally they're not the same color. So if we do introduce design tokens, it becomes a lot easier. So what you can do is if I call this primary surface, and then I call this secondary surface, it's still the same color, all right? It's still MJ, but has two different properties, two different ways of being used. The same person can be used for two different purposes. He can either be a fest coordinator or the football team captain. And the same thing over here, this white color or neutral 700, which, and I'm just going to say, let's say I'm going to call this uh, neutral zero, sorry, neutral zero, not 700. Copy that and paste that over here. Has two different purposes. So now what I can do is even though this is the same color, I'm just going to assign primary surface to be white, secondary surface also to be white in light mode. But in dark mode, I can say the primary surface to be black and the secondary surface to be something else, All right? So this is the beauty of using design tokens. Now I'm going to take another example. So let's say we have this card, which is, has a green color background. It's got some text and it's got some icon over here as well. And uh, this is basically, let's assume that this is uh, the background color. Now this is what it is in light mode. Now, if I go ahead and change this to dark mode and let's go ahead and make this completely black, which means we want to change everything which is white to black. So which means the background gets changed, which means the titles get changed which means this also gets changed. Now this is really weird. This is not the way we want to do things. Now, why did this happen is because I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste that over here. So we just assumed that this was neutral zero, neutral zero. And this was also neutral zero. Maybe I'm just going to increase the font size of this to like 20 so we can see better. So yeah, now this is typically the wrong way to do it. So the right way to do this is if I were to make a duplicate of this and then I'm going to copy this um, and then I'm going to paste that over here. So I would say this would be primary surface. Okay. And then I would come make a duplicate of this and then move this way all over here and this white. Okay. I'm just going to set this to full container. Okay. Yeah, this white is not going to be primary surface. Let's say we call this icon surface. Okay. And then we also have some text over here. All right. And maybe we can call this primary text, but that would be wrong because our primary text is usually black uh, on a light background. So I'm just going to call this card primary text. Okay. Card primary text. Now, once we do this, we can now, let's say we change this from light mode to dark mode. We can say, hey, in light mode, I want these two colors to change. And I'm going to quickly change the color of this so we can get a better understanding. Is that these two colors will invert. Okay. So, or maybe a better way to explain this is I'm going to make this orange and I'm going to make this to be a different color. So let's say I, I pick some sort of a blue color is that the primary surface color actually changes from light mode to dark mode, but the primary card text and the icon surface does not change. Now, these are not different colors. These are actually the same color. So I'm going to say N zero 
Okay, this is also going to be n zero. Zero, this is also going to be n zero, which means that all of this is also the same thing. But they all just have different hex values because we sort of assigned the hex value to the use case or the property rather than the actual color, right? So I hope you guys understand how design tokens work and how they perform. Now, all these are design decisions. Now, if you believe that this color also should change in light, in dark mode, all right? If you feel this is the expected input, what you can also do is you can just say primary text N0, primary text, you give it the same design token, but then in the code, you give it a different color. Right? So in icon surface, the color is going to stay the same, but for card primary text and primary surface, they're going to be different. So you can actually define the hex codes as well. So to explain this even further, what I can do is since this is N0, I can also add another one and then just say this is FFF, FFF. Okay. I'm going to copy this and I'll paste that over here. All right. And then I'm going to paste that over here. And then I'm going to paste that over here and then, oops, this is going to be zero, 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 zero. Obviously copy this and then paste this over here, over here as well. So as you can see, what's happening here is that these two elements don't change the name of the person and the nickname. They don't change. They do not change at all. The only thing that changes is what they are being used for. Now, this is sort of an overall understanding and theory, but in practical, how does it actually work? So I found this image online and I'm going to share the link to that uh, down in the description. And basically what's happening here is that they've created four sets of elements. So you've got a raw variable, you've got a base token, you've got a semantic token, and then you've got a component token. Now there is no right way to make this naming structure or naming hierarchy. There are so many articles online that tell you how to set up the nomenclature and set up uh, the entire system. Um, and it totally depends on your use case and your needs. Um, but I'm just gonna give you a small example. All right, so let's start off with the first one, which seems to be the sort of a purple color. And the token name is LMNT. And I'm guessing LMNT is the name of the design system. So we can just ignore this for now. So. The base token name for this hex code is color primary 500. And there's a darker version, which is color primary 700. So if you have seen my previous video about colors, you will understand what 500 and 700 is. If you haven't checked out already, you've got secondary color, which is blue. And then you've got your tertiary color or your accessory colors or ancillary colors, um, which is this color, which is some sort of a green. Okay. And then moving forward. This particular color, which was the original purple primary 500 is called color primary. Okay. And the other one is called primary on surface. And then it also has another one which is called primary variant. Now things might get very complicated over here. Um, if you are a beginner, very likely that you will not be setting up these design tokens. This is quite advanced users. And if you are a big company, you will already have somebody who manages the design system. So they will understand. But as a beginner, it's important to understand the theory of it at least. And then this color. So as you can see over here, this one color, is being used for two different purposes. Just the way we looked over here, MJ is being used for two different purposes. All right. So in this case, this becomes the nickname and then it's used for two, two different purposes. And then there is even more, this goes at a component level because what we did here was it was just, was it a surface or a background or whatever it was. So this color is being used for button filled default. Now the second color is used for text. The first one is being used as a background color. The second one is used is being used as a text. And then the other one here is being used as a divider or sorry, is being used as a border 
um, for an outlined button. So obviously you have multiple button style. You have a filled button, then you might have a stroke button, right? And then you have two different options. One is the default, maybe one is a secondary, then one is a hover or whatever it is. So this way it becomes really easy to understand if, if I pick this color, where is this color being used and what should I use it for? This even helps new developers who are joining the company. So this color can be used for these different purposes. It can be the background color of the button. It can be uh, a text. It can be a border. It can be anything, right? So all these arrow marks that you create, this sort of like a map that is created and you want to use this everywhere. Now for white colors, as you see over here, there isn't much. They've just said color surface, color background, color surface variant and things like that. Now, what this means is if I were to translate it, so let me just quickly get that, um, this, this button over here. All right. So we can sort of get like a visual example. Whoa, that is too huge. So I'm just going to shrink this so that we can see what's happening. All right. So this particular color, which is 67, three, a B seven, 67, three, a B seven. All right. Um, and obviously this is definitely white. Okay. Is being used as a color property for the filled button. And this is the default state and it's used as a fill property. Now you can do this for multiple things. You can do this for corner radiuses. You can do this for opacity. You can do this for drop shadow levels. Um, and you can clearly see what the properties are. What are the nicknames? What are the use cases basically? So basically elevation zero, elevation one becomes the nicknames. Um, elevation button filled resting is a use case. Elevation button filled hover is a use case. Elevation button filled press is a use case. And these are the appropriate values. Now in this case, um, you have two, four and eight and each of them just have one use case. So in this case, if the developer asks you, hey, which um, shadow values do I use? So you say, hey, why don't you use elevation two or why don't you use elevation button filled resting? Now, moving forward, the last thing. So now once you have this color palette created, you want to sort of assign these tokens over here. So for example, I'm going to take a very simple example. I'm just going to grab this button over here. All right. I'm just going to, whoops, uh, or actually, let me just get uh, this one that we made. I'm going to copy that uh, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste it over here. All right. Now let's see. We take, let's say if you take Uber, for example, Uber has sort of like a very dark color. All right. And let's say we make this white color. All right. Now this is usually the primary color, but in some cases, let's say you have a colored background or you have a dark background or something like that. You have a secondary button, all right, which has a different color. So this is going to be uh, white. And then this is going to be this color, right? So now what's happening here. Now this is the primary CTA. And both of this is in light mode, right? Do not mistake me. Both of this is in light mode, a secondary light mode CTA, or I'm just going to say primary CTA light mode, and this is going to be secondary CTA light mode. So how do you, how will you assign design tokens for this? So I'm just going to put this into an auto layout and then reduce these values to zero. And then I'm going to grab this text. Whoops. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to bring this down over here. And then now I can give this a design token. So obviously I'm not going to go through this whole semantic token component thing over here because it totally depends on the type of components you have. All right. So I'm just going to say color. Oops. Oh, looks like we have an issue. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, set this to real case. Okay. I'll just say color CTA surface. Okay. I'm going to duplicate this. All right. And I'm also going to use this for the text. So I'm going to say color, or maybe you're going to say primary CTA, and this is going to be secondary CTA text. Right. So what's happening here is that this is a color token for a primary CTA, as you see over here, and this is the surface. Now this is a color token 
for the secondary CTA, where this is a text. This is for surface and this is for text. Now we can do the same thing over here as well. So I'm going to copy these two. So I'm just going to copy this. Uh, I'm going to come here to the white part. Over here we have N0. I'm just going to fix this auto layout and go to the bottom. Okay. So this is going to be color for the primary CTA. This is going to be end up becoming a text. And this is a color for the secondary CTA. This is going to end up becoming a surface. Okay. Now let's take this another level to give you a little bit more example. Let's say there is a hover state for this, right? So if there is a hover state, I'm probably going to pick this. So as I hover on it, it becomes this color. So what I can do is I'm going to assign a token for this as well. All right. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste that over here. Now here, this is going to be color. This is going to be for the secondary CTA and this is going to be text or this time I'm just, I'm also going to say hover and I'm going to say text, sorry, hover. And this is going to be the surface. It's a surface color, right? So which means we can come over here and we can add another level and call this default text. Okay. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to say this is going to be default surface. So as you can see over here, it's a color token for the primary CTA for a default state and for the text element of the component. Okay. Which means we can do that here as well. So I'm going to set this to default surface. It's going to see default text, right? Now this is pretty much how these were created but it can get a lot more complicated depending on the amount of components and things that you have. Now, even the corner radius is as well for the buttons. Um, all right. The radius, you can say, you can say, you know, radius sharp, radius small, radius medium, radius large. And of course, each of that has a, so for the button, you're going to say radius medium. If you're using a badge, you're going to say radius rounded and each of those has their own values, right? So, this is how you want to set up your design tokens and these tokens can be mentioned. So let's say, for example, we go ahead and create um, this color style and I'm just going to call this neutral zero. All right. So we have this over here. Uh, what you can do over here is you can come here to the settings and you can add a description. So you can pretty much add the token value over here. So if we click on this and then you can add the token value over here, you can press enter. You can add this token value here as well. Um, let's see that. And then I'm going to add this token value uh, here as well. And uh, I'm also going to give that like a, like a dot. So they can see what this is and maybe I get rid of the color part over here because we know that it's a color item. All right. And the benefit of doing this is anytime somebody, let's say, clicks on this and they hover on it. Um, and of, let's say, assume that this is a master component. They can see what the appropriate uh, design tokens are for uh, this particular component. So now by doing that, anytime you click on the, uh, the, the, the color swatch, you can see the list of all the tokens that are there. Now, after you've gone ahead and created all your design tokens, um, we can go ahead and create color styles for each of this in the right inspector panel. I'm going to show you a neat trick of how to organize things so that it's super easy for anybody, uh, new to the team, old to the team, anybody else who isn't a designer to understand how to use the color system. So the first thing you want to do is if you, if you haven't already created all your color styles, um, I'm going to show you what you can do, but if you've already created, maybe just skip the video a little bit or just continue to watch. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you create your color styles and, um, for every element on which the color is applied. So for example, in this case, it's this is this frame, uh, you want to select all of them. All right. Just make sure you select all the elements. Okay. And as you can see, I've sort of named them with the appropriate, um, uh, you know, the, the semantic value, uh, which is N300, 200 and all of that. And then you want to go to your, uh, plugins and you want to choose this plugin called as chroma colors. And all you have to do is just click on run. And what that does that goes ahead and creates all the color palettes for you with the appropriate name. Now, obviously we want these to be in descending order. So I'm going to quickly going to go ahead and arrange that. Um, there we go. 400, 300, 200, 100, 
50 and 0. Now, the other thing is that, for example, let's go ahead and click on uh, this uh, C team. And if you want to apply the color, you can see that all the colors over here. But the thing is, it becomes really hard to understand what color is used for what, when to use what, and there's no hierarchy as such. And the moment you add these green colors, these green colors also get added over here. So a good way of categorizing them is by selecting any one of them. And uh, you want to give, you want to create like a folder system. So I'm just going to call this neutral and I'm going to add a slash. So it's going to be neutral slash and then whatever you want to call it. And when you do that, it creates this folder. And then all you have to do is select all the elements, uh, all the other colors, sorry, and then drop that in. Um, and then you can close this up. So now when you go ahead and select this, um, you can go ahead, whoops, sorry. Uh, you can go ahead and you can see that there's a heading that's called neutral. Now that's not it. Now let's take things a little bit further. Now, the thing here is that we have these two uh, elements, all right? Okay, now when I select this, uh, we want to use that token system that we just, you know, spent uh, all the past few minutes uh, understanding and creating. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to apply the neutral color that we have, which is this, right, which is perfect. But we don't want it to be neutral and 900. What we want to do is we want to break this and then you want to create a new style with the same color. So we're sort of repeating the color styles. Now I'm going to go call this surface and then I'm going to call this primary, right? Um, and then I'm going to select this one, which is F. And then I'm going to add this. I'm going to call this primary and I'm going to say slash and this is going to be inverted or you can give it whatever name you want. Okay. And for the text over here, I'm going to select this text. And then I'm going to say uh, text slash primary. And then this one is going to be text slash inverted. All right. So now I can go. Now, if we look over here on the side, we've got the neutral colors. You've got the primary colors. Oh, sorry. This shouldn't be primary. Um, this should be basic. Sorry. This should be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is how it is. So it's supposed to be surface and then we have uh, text where text can come on top and then surface and then a neutral. Um, we can also go ahead and create another version if we need. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and add in a stroke over here and then set the stroke of this to be white. Maybe this is some sort of a secondary color. And now we have the stroke over here. So instead of what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say divider and then I'm going to say primary. Okay. So what's happening here is that when I just go ahead and try to find a color, I can figure out which color it is. Is it a surface primary? Is it a surface inverted? Now we can even take things a little further. So let's say we wanted to make a button, which was a different color, right? So let's say that this button um, has this color, right? Let's say, just say this color. Okay. Um, so what I would do over here is we would already have all the green colors down here once we create the palette for that. But at the same time, you can still duplicate some of them so that anybody using can pick the colors really fast. So I'm going to click over here. I'm going to call this surface because we already have that folder. I'm going to say slash and then I'm going to say brand primary. All right. Um, so then, um, so what we can do, we can come over here and then you can see that we have surface, we have this, and then you have this inverted and then you have a uh, brand primary. All right. Now, if you're using text links, you can go ahead and uh, create this color and then you can say add and then you can say text and then you say brand primary. All right. So uh, if there's a text link, you can speak all the colors from here. So basically text surfaces and dividers, you want to duplicate them and set them in accordance with hierarchy. Um, for example, another week we can take another message where you, let's say you're creating a toast message, for example, right? So we want to have a very light color. So I'm going to select this color for the toast message or probably this color. And for the text, I can have uh, probably, I don't know, um, maybe let's say G 700, right? Um, or maybe let's just say G 800. All right. So in that case, this, whoops, uh, this color would be, whoops. Surface slash, um, brand secondary, because this is probably like a secondary color and this can be 
uh, text, we already have the text uh, primary color brand primary already here. So if we look at our surfaces, we've got a primary inverted, we've got a brand primary, which is this, we've got a brand secondary, which is this. Uh, and then here we have um, the text over here. Uh, the text here is going to be brand primary uh, there as well. So this is pretty much how you want to go ahead and set up your color styles. So basically what that means is that all the colors in your text section, surface section and divider section are going to be here um, in the neutral. Once you create uh, the color styles for all the green colors, you will have a section that says green. You add any additional colors, you can add that as well. So basically all your colors should be here and then you individually duplicate some of the ones that you want so that it's super easy for designers to just click and access um, so that if they want to select a background color, they don't have to figure out which one it is. Um, if you have been a designer for a while, you probably know um, in the company that you're working at, but if a new designer joins or if a developer needs to understand, uh, it's gonna be really tricky. Another interesting thing to note here is that if I go to the inspect section and I click on the element, I can actually see the sort of token that was used, which is surface brand secondary, surface brand primary, surface primary, surface inverter, right? And also if you click on the text, you can see that it says, um, oh, wait, I don't think we applied the color style to this. There we go. So we didn't apply the color style. So I'm just gonna say text brand primary, all right? So now when I select this element and go to inspect, it's gonna see text brand primary. So this way, engineers also know what colors to use, what colors to pick, what tokens to use. And by doing this, it makes life easier for every single person out there. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.